I got a really funny Facebook meme yesterday from one of you in the congregation who will remain nameless uh, that said something to the effect of praying for all the pastors this week who are putting together an online worship service, hoping it doesn't look like a hostage video. Very funny, very appropriate, not super helpful, uh, but uh, it gave me a good laugh. Uh, one of the toughest things this week, I think, about putting a worship service together was really truly realizing how the church is not the building, it's not the pastor, it's the people. And one of the biggest things that gave me hope this week was that when I sent out some messages, texts, and emails uh, looking for help from the congregation, um, every single person responded positively and put it, uh, more work in than uh, we even had time to use this morning. So we're going to hopefully upload uh, some of the extra stuff we had for worship this morning on the YouTube page uh, when it's up and running. Uh, but thanks for worshiping with us this morning.
Hey, Dad, what's wrong? I'm just sad because I can't do a children's message this week. Well, I already hit the baby Jesus in the sanctuary, and you should go find it. You hit the baby Jesus, and I would go look for it? Yeah. <gasps> Thank you. This will be fun. I give up. I can't find it anywhere. You hit it way too hard. Better luck next time. I guess so. Incense, let my prayers arise, lift my arms as sacrifice. Lord my God, I turn my eyes to you, to you. Like incense, let my prayers arise, I lift my arms as sacrifice. Lord my God, I turn my eyes to you, to you, to you. will break apart, but I'm going to turn to you, to you, to you, I'm going to turn my eyes to you, to you, to you, I'm going to turn my eyes to you. Let the righteous strike, let the faithful correct. Never let the oil of the wicked touch my head. Let the righteous strike, let the faithful correct. Never let the oil of the wicked touch my head. Like incense, let my prayers arise. I lift my arms as sacrifice. Lord my God, I turn my eyes to you. I'm gonna turn my eyes to you, to you, to you. I'm gonna turn my eyes to you, to you. Yeah. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good morning, everyone. Karen and I are going to read from Matthew chapter 6, 25 through 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in the barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which 
is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I'm out driving around right now. This is what relaxes me and makes me a little more calm with what's going on. Only one person knows when this is gonna end and that's God. You know, as I was driving around thinking, two weeks ago, our youth group led the service. Aim higher was our theme. This is now the time to demonstrate aim higher. This is our time to trust in God. God has the plan. I'm gonna pull over up here and I'd like to do something that we occasionally do when we're all together. I'm gonna to reach out and put my hand up. I want everybody to get near their computer, their phone, however you're seeing this right now and let's, let's put our hand on each other and let's pray. Dear God, we know that even though we may be far apart as a congregation this morning, we are all bound together as one with your Holy Spirit. We know that no matter what tomorrow's news may be, no matter what fears or anxiety we may have, you are more powerful than any other force on earth. You are the great healer. You are with us in joy and in sorrow. God, this morning we lift a prayer for all of those people who are sick and in need of healing. May you heal them. We pray for all of those in the medical field and the first responders who are taking care of those in need. Would you protect them and keep them healthy? God, we pray for all those who are at work, that you would keep them safe and be with those who are homebound as well. Let them know that the comfort of your love is there. God, let us close this prayer with the words your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and please forgive our debts as we forgive those who debted against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Guys, hang in there, put your trust in God. We will get through this. And so in lieu of a sermon, traditional sermon, which nobody wants to sit and watch another pastor talk for 20 minutes, I've got health professional extraordinaire Beth McClellan here to talk a little bit about what's going on, anxiety, anxiety. and faith and all this kind of stuff, and I, I don't want to out you, but okay. I am somebody who struggles pretty heavy with anxiety. Okay. Oh, I think everybody out there knows I struggle with anxiety. Okay. Yeah. Is I'm it, pretty is it, it. Is it, and I can cut any of this out. No, is you're it, fine. Is it okay to admit that uh, we both uh, occasionally attend a mental health support group, a anxiety? Support group. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, absolutely. So I highly recommend it if anybody's looking for one. <laughs> <laughs> Although, we're going to have to go online with it if you do it again. Oh, that's true. That's true. And I don't like to be filmed, so this is giving me anxiety. So That's right. Just, you don't even just have focus to on you. Yeah, yeah. For people who don't know, just give a quick, like, what, what do you do for a living? I am the middle school counselor here at PCM. Um, I was a social worker, and then I stayed home with my kids, and then I got my master's in counseling. And... Always wanted to work in the schools because I really wanted to work with adolescents. You were a social worker. I was a social worker. Or I worked. Um, I worked a couple different places. I worked in Ames and I worked for YSS here in Des Moines, um, and I was a caseworker for kids who'd been turned over to the state of Iowa. Wow. So. That's heavy duty stuff. It's heavy duty stuff. Did yeah. you have your own anxiety stuff before you started that job? Or? Yes. I um, I started having anxiety as a child. I kind of had a state, uh, unstable home life and some things go on and my anxiety by middle school was awful and um, my middle school counselor made a huge difference in my life hmm. and that's what made me want to become a counselor. When I'm struggling, I almost feel like my faith is stronger hmm. than when things are going well. It kind of goes, you kind of, I hate to say this, but like maybe you don't think about it as much because things are going well and you know, you're just going about your daily life and then... For me, when things get more difficult, I rely more on my faith and mm. spirituality. So, so we, we've got a whole bunch of people stuck in homes with their families. Mm -hmm. Give me, <laughs> give me. <laughs> Everybody having anxiety together. <laughs> we, were on, we were on day one and a half at our house, and I think everybody had a meltdown within 10 <laughs> minutes. I was like, we are so done. This is not going to work. How about if I tell you, like, kind of some of the things I'm doing right now and I would recommend for, like, yes. my middle school students? Yes. Because even though it's for adolescents, it's stuff that works for yeah. for everybody. Um, so one of the things that I'm finding right now is with anxiety, you don't just focus on the facts. You don't just focus on, okay, there's a virus. We should stay home and wash our hands and be careful. Um, you start to spin. You start to think about um, what the, all the what ifs. What if someone in my family catches this? What if the economy tanks? What if, um, you know, my, my son doesn't get to have a high school graduation? Um, those are the things that start spinning my anxiety. Um, so there are a couple of tools that I use. Um, one is mindfulness. And mindfulness is really just becoming present in the moment. Um, I do it with my middle school students. I have them get in a a position where as you relax, you won't flop, flop over mm -hmm. <laughs> and fall on the floor. Um, and we just focus on breathing. Um, when you're focusing on breathing, you should always breathe in through the nose. And I usually do a count of five and then out through the mouth. Um, kind of like you're going to blow out a birthday candle, but real gently. Yeah. Um, and only focus on the breathing and counting for, for this mindfulness activity. Your mind's going to start to wander. And every time it starts to wander, you just bring it back to your counting. And one thing I like to imagine is that I'm breathing in all the positive, all the light. I'm breathing in faithfulness. I'm breathing in calmness. And I'm blowing out all of the negative, the anxiety and the fear and the, 
the worries that um, I'm wrapped up in. Do that for even just three minutes. And then I usually finish with, um, it's an activity that's, again, kind of mindful. It's, it's based in a grounding, grounding yourself. Um, and it's five, four, three, two, one. So it's noticing five things that you can see, um, four things that you can feel, three things that you can hear, two things that you can smell, and then you end with one positive. Now, a lot of times they say to end with a positive about yourself. Hmm. Sometimes that's harder for me than others. So I end with just a positive, a general positive. So yeah. I usually try to do this in a sunbeam or outside. Um, and again, you know, five things that I can see. I try to find, I try to find the beauty. I see the birds, I can see the leaves blowing in the wind. I can see the sunshine, <laughs> I can see the clouds. Um, the here or the feel can be even, we don't notice, like when you take a deep breath in, we can actually feel that filling our lungs. You can feel the coolness of the air. You can feel your lungs expanding. Um, so focusing on some of those body feelings that you have and also like I can feel the chair under me supporting me I can feel that I'm physically safe right now mm -hmm. um, hearing again I try to find positive things I can hear the birds I can hear my kids laughing mm. um, smell I try to find positive smells <laughs> <laughs> and then a positivity it might even be the Sun is shining mm -hmm. um, I'm making it through today so I think we, especially right now, start focusing so much on all of the things that are coming, we forget to just focus on the present. Hmm. Just focus right here, right here, I am here and safe. <laughs> here's the thing, here's the thing with your anxiety. It cannot be reasoned with. Okay. You can't talk yourself out of it. The more you try to talk to yourself, the more anxious a lot of times you get. Um, think about when other people are talking to you, really, most of the time, they don't really want you to offer a solution. They just want you to validate their feelings. Mm. To say, I understand, I get why you feel that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same with yourself. Okay, is running out of toilet paper a valid concern right now? Maybe, but we have options, yeah. <laughs> right? Let me ask you this. Okay. Okay, generally I'm the one who's having meltdowns in my house. Mm -hmm. But let's say, on one of those rare occasions, it's not me. Somebody else is having a meltdown. Somebody else is clearly... Stir crazy, cabin crazy. Mm -hmm. How can I help? What can I do for that person in my house who's crying or screaming or just clearly out of sorts? Number one, don't try to stop it. Like, let them express their emotions, validate. Um, when they are ready, when they are calm, um, relatively calming, to get outside. I know that sounds, but there's so much research on the effects of nature and the sun and mm. even now they're looking into like water therapies mm. um so anytime we can get outside i know I, I even did that with my um kids when they were babies if they were uncomfortable or screaming and we would go outside they would always stop mm. um so yes going outside i'm sorry i just realized i keep touching my face and we're not supposed <laughs> to do that. as long as you're not touching my face I'm okay good, no, touch. we're good it's okay we're all struggling right now mm. um talking about the feelings um, finding some of those positive, like grounding activities, like the mindfulness or the five, four, three, two, one, um, getting outside in nature, pets, right. pets are very helpful. Um, and I think just the lack of judgment. It's okay. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to be angry. Right. You know, you might not have graduation. You might not get prom. You had to come home from college early. You're worried about your job. Right. You know, wh whatever it is. I think just validating, saying it's okay, and then grounding and working towards that and finding those coping mechanisms, whether it's coloring or I just ordered cross-stitch. Yeah. <laughs> I just ordered something from Amazon so I can cross-stitch. Just some of those activities that help us cope with our anxieties. Okay, so for the people who are alone, live alone, unmarried, widowed, maybe traveling alone and stuck somewhere, how, what 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 can they do for loneliness? Um, <clears throat> that that's difficult. Um, unfortunately, as much as we we rely on it, social media, email, texting, it actually winds up making us feel lonelier. Hmm. Um, 
we're not supposed to socially interact right now. Um, I have been calling my mom on the phone every single day, and that helps, actually. I, I notice that I feel better after we talk. So hmm. not texting, not social media, but actually hearing that person's voice, having a conversation, laughing together, hearing somebody else's laugh. Um, that helps us feel less lonely. Trying to get outside a little bit, whether that's a walk around your block, um, going for a drive, um, if you are still able to drive, um, writing a letter, those things can help. Again, the writing helps the brain feel more connected. So right. um, I, I've seen some people having visitors where they um, stand outside windows. So, oh, like, yeah. I know I'm going to go for a drive tomorrow, and I'm planning on stopping at my mom's and just waving through the door <laughs> and having a little conversation from six feet away while she's inside and I'm out. Right. Um, but so that, too, if you know somebody who is housebound, who cannot travel, maybe just go over there to their their house and say, I'm just going to sit out here. It's mm. sunny. I'm going to be right here. We're going to have a five-minute conversation mm. and just talk for a few minutes. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific scripture that helps you during times like this? Specific songs, specific, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm I'm a little bit amazed as I, I was looking through scripture this week, the immense amount of scripture that deals with depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. loneliness, mm -hmm. suffering, pain. I there mean, is so much. And some of it is more helpful than others because like, like cast your fears upon me or whatever. Right. I have a hard time doing that. <laughs> um, I hold on to them pretty tight. I do too. I do too. Um, I've only been able to do that once in my life. Um, so my favorite is the 23rd Psalm. It was my grandfather's favorite. And I think that's part of what makes it my favorite is just mm. that attachment to somebody I loved. But when you read that Psalm, it really is calming. It talks about, you know, greener pastures and like, it's a very positive. It takes you to your happy place. It does. Um, and it's not anything about get over it. Right. It's I'm here with you. Right. And that's what I find the most comforting. Like I said, using my Bible coloring book, because sometimes I'll just find a page to color. And it's amazing how many times the message on that page speaks to me. And then just, you know, I know I already said this, but I don't feel like I necessarily pray that often, but I talk to God. Yeah. In often throughout the day when I'm having anxieties or um, or feeling down. Yeah. Um, it's more for me, <clears throat> like I said, it's hard for me to just say, oh, I'm going to give this all to God right. and walk away from it. It's more I feel God with me. I feel God present in my life to help me through these things, to right. help me carry them. I talk to God very informally. Yeah, I'm I like, do too. All right, God. Yep. Now listen, <laughs> I know you think. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I know you think you know what's best for me. Yep. <laughs> well, that's, that's you know, one of the themes that I think has recurred here a lot in worship with the stories that have been in the lectionary this year of Jesus shows up and he doesn't remove the suffering necessarily as much as he walks with the person while they're suffering. Yes. And that, that was kind of the whole point is he, he, he did not eliminate suffering. He suffered alongside of us Absolutely. and suffered for us. and. Yeah showed us how bad suffering can get and yet at the same time it ends in a huge redemption story and that's one of the very hard things i'm wrapping my mind around is not having easter right service this year that's, yeah I mean, that's I, if it was christmas i would lose it right now if yeah. this was christmas and i couldn't do christmas eve or sunday morning i'd be done so i feel like i'm still in denial for some of those things and yeah. i think that's okay too i think that this is so big and unfamiliar and new for all of us. We've never been through something like this. Right. Um, that I'm taking it little chunks at a time. I can't think about Easter or graduation or whatever at this point. I'm thinking, okay, this week is spring break and I'm going to get through this right. week and then we'll look at what next week looks like. Um, right. Part of it too is as scared as we are, it's very easy to slip into the negative. Trying to find some positive. Um, that's really hard right now. Yeah. But even if it's something, every single night we're having a family dinner. Right. You know, um, I'm going to give a friend a call that I haven't talked to in six months because I've got some time. I'm going to work on that house project. Yeah. Um, trying to find something 
positive, trying to find something beautiful every single day. Announcements. We're happy that the group from Cary, Mississippi is back after doing a lot of amazing work down there. Unfortunately, they had to cut their trip a little short, but we know that uh, God used them for great things with the people that they got to interact with and the work that they got to do. Uh, if you see them, don't hug them. Stand the mandatory six feet away and just wave and say, we are happy to have you back. God bless you for the work that you did. This would be a great time for you to do your family sheets that uh, we sent out a while back that everybody's been apparently too busy to fill out. Uh, they should be on an old email that Lorena sent out a few weeks ago, but if not, we'll send out another email this week. We're just looking for info about your family. Might even highlight a few of them on the video. No, I'm not gonna say that because you won't do it. <clears throat> Please remember to write some cards and letters to our shut-ins and homebound. Their names were sent out on an email earlier this week from Lorena. I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, don't hesitate to call or email if you need anything. We'll be back next week with some sort of worship service. We'll see. But uh, I hope this, this one blessed you this morning. Have a good day. It was Scott DeVries who sent me the Facebook meme. The hostage thing. So this is for him. Help me, Scott. Help me. I can hear him coming for me out the door.